the ark must replace the rod. In the wilderness the rod was used by Moses to do miracles. The rod did most of the miracles. It did the miracles of splitting the Red Sea. It did the miracle of um, when he would you know lift it the enemy Amalekites would be defeated. When he would hit it the water would come out. It seemed like the rod was like this magic stick that God used and only Moses had it. No one else had the rod. Nobody else's rod worked. Moses rod was like the, this, this tool that God used. Everyone else's rod wasn't working. But when the promised land comes, I want you to notice in the book of Joshua, you don't see one miracle with the rod. Every miracle in the book of Joshua was done with the ark. And it wasn't Joshua carrying the ark. It was the priest carrying the ark. See in the wilderness, it was just about Moses. In the promised land, it was about the priests. In the wilderness, it's about the rod. The ark was there, but the ark seemed to not play a central, central figure in the miraculous of the wilderness. In the promised land, the ark plays as a central figure in the miraculous. I genuinely believe, you know, like even with us, when we pray with the anointing water, I believe it's like the rod. It's a medium that God uses when we pray with the anointing oil. And sometimes when you see miracles happening and you see these people on the pedestal or you see this man of God on the big stages, you know, and there is a season for that and God gives those men to us all the time. But the season shifts in our church and in your life when you recognize you can also be used by God as a person to do miracles even if you don't have a rod because you already have the ark it's called the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is on your shoulder as long as the Holy Spirit is on your shoulder God can use you in this season to do exactly the same thing sometimes even in a greater way and he would use those great men in the wilderness with the rods can somebody say amen in our church we value prophets we value great men of God we, we invite them we show their clips we encourage you to read their books, listen to their podcasts. But you must understand one thing. All of that is not to replace you taking on the ark of God to move in your world to see the miraculous. You don't need TB Joshua in your house for you to experience healing. You don't need John Chi with his water in your family for you to experience a miracle. There has to be a time where a shift happens in your mind to recognize this is so awesome. Moses and the stick that he had, this is incredible. This is awesome. You know, if we have that in our church, I'm going to go that anytime Moses is praying with the stick. But when I leave the church, the ark is on my shoulders. That means the same power that lives inside of them walks inside of me. And the Holy Spirit is waiting on me to, to step in and then his power steps in. Can somebody shout amen? Man. see with Moses with Moses Moses had to wait on God to move first and then Moses went in with Joshua Joshua said to the priest you go in first and when your feet touch the Jordan see with Moses it was when God splits the Red Sea then you go they always waited on God Joshua God says well, it's gonna be different now I'm gonna wait on you when the priests step in is when the water is gonna split See, no longer, no longer you have to wait on God when it comes to healing, when it comes to deliverance and breakthrough. God has already said it is His will and God has already said He wants to do it. Now you have to step in with the power of the Holy Spirit and say, God, I trust you. God, I know you hate this demons as much as I do. You hate this sickness as much as I do. You hate this poverty as much as I do. I trust you, God. And I step in in your promise in Jesus' name. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Don't wait just for the rod this coming year this coming week be the person who recognizes the Holy Spirit is on your shoulders where you go he goes what you say he says and he will do but if the key here is this is the ark has to be on your shoulders it means you got to be conscious that the Holy Spirit is on you Many people are walking around conscious of demons on them all the time. Oh something is oppressing me, something sits on me and it's fine if it's maybe you're going through something very difficult but if you've been a Christian for the last five, six, seven years, okay if you've been a Christian for the last six months and you've been coming to this church and constantly something sits on your shoulders, do this. You tell the spirit of depression, go to hell where you came from. 
you say did you didn't, this is a wrong address and you if you need to do this you did but you gotta if you come to church you're like but I'm sick shake that off you come to church and you're feeling down shake that off why because Holy Spirit cannot sit on you if you allow all these ravens all these snakes to sit on your shoulders and you're asking their permission how long you're gonna sit them no you tell them you got two seconds get off of my back right now this is not just a, a preacher's talk I cannot tell you how many times in the service when I was younger I had this problem when I would come to service and I feel down you know I, it would just literally take me down for the whole service and pastor would come to me and he would say he said what's wrong with you and I said well I just feel down he said why are you being like a little girl oh man that offended me so mad and I was like man he's not like I, I got struggles here I have a weight of the world on my shoulder 16 and a half don't have a bill that I'm paying for my parents are careful covering for everything and their world is on my shoulders and he's not a sympathetic dude and pastor would always say tell very powerful revelation to me very powerful it changed my world this is the revelation snap out just like that I remember I was like no sympathy no nothing but I realized one thing is that the devil had more power over me not because of any legal door it's because I was lazy and because I was an emotional ro roller coaster and because I allowed that drama spirit to just get inside oh I just don't feel good I'm not gonna lift my hands I don't feel good so I won't sing I won't feel good so I don't pray you know I don't feel good today so I'm just not gonna come to church I had that sit in me as a teenager but because I had a good pastor who always said snap out it doesn't matter how you feel right now you step on that thing now when it happens sometimes I come to service like on Wednesday or on Sunday and I have an excruciating headache literally headache that I, I can't even open my mouth and I think of those words the pastor said within a second song I start jumping better than any of you not because I feel it because every time I jump I feel like I, I jump on that headache and I'm not gonna lie to you how many times nobody prayed for healing when the service was over the headache was gone and the worst the most important part is this I found my victory in Jesus power in Jesus spirit shake that off and get the Spirit of God on your shoulders because somebody say amen